Hi, Shremont Camp friends. My name is Caleb, and I am excited to share with you today my favorite camp story. And the reason this story is my favorite camp story is that it has two of my favorite creatures. The first is a giant, mostly friendly, sometimes invisible snake that lives under the latrines at St. George's Camp. The snake's name is Squadoosh. And every time we talk about Squadoosh in our story today, I'd like you to say Squadoosh. Can we try it together? Squadoosh. Great job. The other of my two favorite creatures is a narwhal. And if you've never seen one, a narwhal is kind of a cross between a whale and a unicorn. It lives in the ocean and it looks like a whale with a giant horn on its head. The name of the narwhal in our story today is Alfonso Everett III. And every time we talk about Alfonso Everett III, I'd like you to say, dur, 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 dur. Let's try it together. Dur, 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 dur. Great! I think we're ready to begin. Once, Long, long ago, the area that we call Shrinemont looked a little different than it looks now. Instead of the mountains that we love, the land was flat as far as the eye could see. Instead of great, big, shadowy trees, little baby trees were careful not to be crushed underfoot. Instead of a spring and a far-off pond called the Dead Sea, a river raged and flowed into a giant lake. And no one lived there. No one, that is, except the animals and a giant, mostly friendly, sometimes invisible, snake named Squadoosh. Squadoosh. One thing you should know about Squadoosh, Squadoosh. is that he was one bad mamma jamma. Squadoosh. Squadoosh was bad. He was badder than bad. He was badder than bad, bad Leroy Brown, bad. And as the baddest, giant, mostly friendly, sometimes invisible snake that he was, Squadoosh, Squadoosh. knew it was his duty to protect the land and the creatures around him. He pushed the baby trees to make sure they found the sunlight. He helped the bunnies to their favorite patch of clover. When two squirrels got into an argument about whose acorn was better, Squadoosh, Squadoosh was right there to make sure they got along. One day, Squadoosh, Squadoosh slithered along happily, escorting a platypus to the best section of grubs when all of a sudden, <gasps> a narwhal swam up and out of the lake. 
this narwhal's name was Alfonso Everett the <laughs> Third. One thing you should know about Alfonso Everett the <laughs> Third is he was a bad mamma jamma. He was badder than bad. He was badder than bad, bad Leroy Brown bad. He was worse than how your socks would smell. If you filled them with cheese and left them in the sun, bad. And he was up to no good. He called out, Squadoosh! Squadoosh! I hear you're pretty bad. I'd be willing to bet that I'm badder. In fact, I'm here to issue you a challenge. For this land, as far as the eye can see, whoever wins is the baddest and gets to stay here forever. And so the two faced off in the time-honored tradition of bad mamajamas everywhere. They played a game of Ultimate Frisbee. One thing you should know about Squadoosh, Squadoosh. is that he was an ultimate champion. With his mouth, he could whip the disc from one end of the field and slither at lightning speed down to the other end and catch his own throw. A thing to know about Alfonso Everett III <laughs> is that he was surprisingly good at Ultimate too. He could twirl the disc with his horn fling it across the field, jump up, and grab it with his tail. And so they played. They played on and on, back and forth and back and forth, each bringing his best moves and each not getting very far. They played for hours. And hours became days, and days became years. On and on and on they played. From near and from far, they came to watch the snake and the narwhal. So many people came, they built a hotel, Virginia House. You may have visited there on your way to camp. The Mumas came to watch over things as the game went on. They've been there ever since. Cabins were built in groups. St. George's Camp, Woodward, Bear Wallow, so that children would have a place to learn and grow. And still, the battle went on. On, and on, and on. And Squadoosh, Squadoosh was getting tired. It took all of his energy to keep going. But he looked at the people, at the squirrels and the bunnies, at the little platypus. And he knew keep going is what he had to do. Alfonso Everett III <laughs> was growing tired as well. And he decided to cheat. With the last of his strength, he threw the frisbee. And instead of trying to catch it, he pulled back and hit Squadoosh, Squadoosh with his horn. 
Squadoosh. Squadoosh. Fell back. Saddened and scared, the people watched. The squirrels and the bunnies watched. The little platypus watched. Back, back he flew. And the very land itself sprung up into a mountain to catch him. It's called North Mountain now, and you may have climbed it to look over the valley. And there Squadoosh lay, still. Alfonso Everett the Third could not have been happier. He had won. The whole land was his. The land was his. The people were his. The squirrels and the bunnies were his. The little platypus. But wait. The little platypus didn't seem so little anymore. Was it his imagination, or was she growing? Bigger and bigger she grew. Her name was Sheila. One thing you should know about Sheila, she was a bad Mamma Jamma. She was badder than bad. She was badder than bad, bad Leroy Brown bad. She was worse than how your socks would smell if you filled them with cheese and let them sit in the sun bad. She was badder than the coolest skateboard trick you have ever seen in your life bad. And she had no patience for cheaters. Up Sheila waddled and headbutted Alfonso Everett III <laughs> back toward the lake. Back, back, and back he flew and the waters left with him. The big lake became the pond we now call the Dead Sea. And the raging river slowed into a spring, the Orkney Spring, that you may have tasted when you visit camp. Slowly, Squadoosh, Squadoosh came forward as Alfonso Everett III <laughs> disappeared from sight, never to be seen again. Slowly, Sheila shrank back down to a normal platypus size and went back to her grubs. And if you visit Woodward Camp or Bear Wallow Camp, a counselor might tell you about a room with some fancy clothes named Platypus in her memory. The people who watched the game packed their bags and went home. Many of them come back once a year or send their children to camp to learn and grow as they once did. If you're lucky, you might see them play ultimate as the counselors wait to play against whoever in the world shows up, a commemoration of that fateful day. And as for Squadoosh, Squadoosh. he still protects the land. He still points the plants towards the sun helps the bunnies to find the best bit of clover and is especially nice to platypi. 
but most of all he waits. In watch. In case Alfonso Everett the third <laughs> should ever return. And if you're by the latrines at St. George's Camp, on just the right day, you might see him. And if you ask very nicely, that big, mostly friendly, sometimes invisible snake might tell you this story himself. The End